See there? Very sensitive around the grid of the 4D32 output tube. There's Terry here, D-Lab still working on that Johnson Viking 1 buzz problem. Can't even sleep at night. I don't want to give up because I don't want to disappoint you guys. So I'm going to keep on going until I find the problem. So here's where we're at. All right, so I listened and I compared the Viking 1's electrical circuit to the Viking 2. Even though they don't have the same output tubes, there's a few things that make sense that the Viking 1, at least this Viking 1, is lacking. So Gary, KG8LB, told me to take a look where the AC came in and did it have those input coils like they have on the Viking 2. No, it does not. This terminal board here, I don't know if that's original, but that's where the AC landed. I've already removed that cord. I have a filter assembly from a Viking 2, so I'm gonna install that back here. The other thing is, they're supposed to be, on the Viking 2, there is a choke in line with the hot lead of the filament supply to the two 6146s. This has nothing, so I'm gonna add that. So I've removed the cage, I'm going to put this RFC choke back where it belongs. We'll do the improvements to the power supply and the filament circuit, and we'll try it again. So I added the AC input line filtering like the Viking 2 has. The choke is in place. I relocated this RFC choke that feeds the grid of the output tube. So all that is back to stock. So the question is, did that eliminate the buzz? So here we go. That's a big negatory. Well, a lot of you guys have been writing in and giving me some great suggestions. One guy gave me a brilliant suggestion, and that was to put a little coil on the end of a scope probe and do a little RF sniffing, right? So that's what we're gonna do. So to rule out any other sources of noise, the VFO is totally disconnected, okay? I'm not gonna use crystals. We're not gonna use anything. We're gonna look for that irritating buzz that wants to ride on all the signals. And if I can find that and eliminate it, it should be clean as a whistle. So let me show you the setup. For the test, I modified this cheap probe with a one millihenry coil, okay? So the positive and negative are hooked across this coil, and I'm gonna use this as a little sniffer. Viking one is fired up. There is no crystal installed. The VFO is not installed either. And I have my scope set up to watch the noise across the coil, right? So we can go in here. We know that in this area is where I had a majority of the noise. Remember this little coil here going to the grid? Also thought maybe there was some noise up here. So we can sniff around. Here's the grid caps. Still nothing really. No big activity on the scope, maybe a little bit. Some of you are saying, boy, that big old cap there looks suspicious. Well, I don't see anything there either. So what we're looking for is an increase in amplitude as we're sniffing around, okay? So the VFO comes in back here, scoots across, got a little 6AU6, I believe, amplifier. Now you see the level one up a little bit? Well, I've got the camera right down here, hopefully, where you can see what I'm seeing. So up here, where we thought the noise violator was, not so much noise, but when we get down in this area, here's those uh, grid caps. You see, it's a little bit decreased. Then we get down here, by this tube base, I notice a lot more activity. If I work my way back to the 6AU6, it goes down. But as I go over here, there seems to be a little bit more of a noise signature. See there? Take it away. So I believe that we're seeing some noise, some stray AC from the 6AQ5 multiplier tube, okay? 
So we got the oscillator back here. And over here it appears to be a little higher. I can see the noise amplitude going up and down. You see it? It's not so much in these other areas as it is here. Yeah, that's me touching things. So yes, there is some random AC noise in the transmitter. And of course that noise will jump right on the VFO signal. And that's why we're seeing it when we spot and then it's amplified when we transmit. Okay. So above that is the 6AQ5 multiplier tube. I'm going to check that, take a look at the shielding, and then we'll take a look at these little uh, bypass caps. I think they're 0.005s down here and take a real close look at the grounding. But this is the area that's generated the noise that's riding on all the signals of the Viking 1. All right, so take a look at this ground lug right here. Rocks back and forth, going right to the 6BQ5 tube, which is causing our noise. Got a cap here and a resistor. With this loose ground, we may have just found the buzz issue. So I repaired the grounds and one of you guys pointed out that this 2.7K resistor looked hurt. I checked it and it was out of tolerance but not bad. So let's see what our noise level is now. Hmm. Not much different is it? So I haven't given up yet. It's actually driving me nuts. I've talked to a lot of hams. I've been reading all of you guys' comments, I'm doing my best. This thing is really burning up some time, but at this point, what do I have to lose? Let's get it fixed. We'll see you in the next episode.